Hey, it's Jesse Cervantes with Creative Congo, and boom! So uh, this is what we're talking about today. Making these really nice textures, very rich textures, using uh, luma mats. And I'll just say frankly, for the longest time, whenever someone said a luma mat, you know, alpha mat, track mat, a yoga mat, man, any kind of mat, man, I just completely glazed over. Zero interest, but they're actually very powerful, really easy to use, and... Uh, you can do a lot of cool stuff. So all these things were done in like a minute, you know. I mean, it's just amazing how fast you can make these really nice textures. So um, so let's do it. I'm going to start by just making a new comp. And then I'm going to uh, command Y to make a new layer. And I'll call this uh, mat. And then I'm going to add a ramp, gradient ramp effect. And so um, the way a luma mat works is... You know, that was the first thing that was confusing. Like, what does that mean, luma, luminance, and all that? All it is, is you know, first of all, luminate matte really only works well with white and black. And white, in this case, is 100% illuminated. Black is 100% not illuminated. And then uh, all the intermediate areas of gray are intermediately illuminated. So, as an example, I'm going to come back here and grab this background layer, Command-C, over here, Command V, and just paste in here. All it is is, again, just another radial ramp going from black to slightly gray. Just drop that to the bottom so there's some kind of background. Come over here and grab this uh, Congo logo that I made. And, you know, all this is is a shape layer and with some text. And these are also little shape layers with a, a little animation happening. And I'm going to drop that underneath the mat. So the way the mat works is... Um, a mat, just like a just like a floor mat or a or a table mat, you know, it goes on top of what you're what you're working with. So you put the floor mat on top of the floor. You put a table mat on top of the table. You put a door mat on top of the door. Well, anyway, <laughs> the mat goes on top. So if you come over here, you can see this thing called track mats. And if you can't see this, depending on what area of After Effects you're in, you know, these little things right here will open up your toggles and switches so you can toggle and switch back and forth or you can just have everything open and available so I'm gonna come over here and just go to my mats and type Lu click on luma mat and it turns the layer off underneath and that becomes your mat and just like we were saying before where it's black it's not illuminated and you can't see it where it's white it's fully illuminated and you can see it and everything intermediate area of gray you can intermediately see it so if I move this over there's more black and so it disappears and if you move this over there's more white and so you can see more and I turn this back on and you can see wherever it's black you can't see it wherever it's white you can see it and that's all it is and if I want to do the opposite come over here and go to luma inverted and now wherever it's black I can see it wherever it's white I cannot see it and then the gray you know does that just to make this a little bit more specific I'm gonna go to posterize the posterize effect double click on it so it oops command Z I was on the wrong layer. Double click on it. So it goes on to this layer. I'm just going to turn this down to 3. So here we have black, 50% gray, and white. And when I turn this off and the mat is working, where it's black, I can see it because it's inverted. Let me turn it back to a regular luma mat. Where it's black, I cannot see it at all. Where it's white, I can see it 100%. And where it's gray, I can only... It's at 50% opacity. So really what the mat does, what the luminant mat does, is affect the opacity. If it's white, you can see it. If it's black, you can't. If it's gray, depending on how much gray is how much you can see it. And that's all there is to it. So what does that mean to making textures? Well, first of all, with this little thing right here, um, I did add one little effect to help it out, and that's to go to Layer, Layer Styles, Bevel and Emboss. Came into the Bevel and Emboss. I made it a uh, outer bevel. Um, and made it a chisel hard and just move this to the bezel soften to 10 just to give it you know a little a little something a little depth for when I added a texture and then I'll come over here and I'll grab this wood texture and by the way I'll make this project available and you can have all of these textures There's like eight or nine concrete and some graffiti and marble and brick and wood I dropped the wood, and uh, I took these pictures. They're mine, and uh, you know, so you can have them. You know, it's free and safe, and use them for whatever you want to, if you want to. So the thing, the first thing to notice is with the wood texture, there's no white. 
there's no real white here at all, and there's no real black here. There's some dark spots, and there's some light spots, but there's no white, and there's no black. But if I come over here to my logo, and see the Luma mat's already on, I'm just going to turn it off, and then I'm going to turn it back on. And then, you know, also, if the Luma mat's already on, you can just turn the layer off underneath it, uh, above it, and then you can see it. So you can already see that some of the texture is coming through. But the issue is that, uh, you know, again, there's no white, there's no pure white, there's no pure black. So the way to solve that is you come over here and first you add the tent effect. And now you, it, that just maps all the colors to white and black. And so if I come over here, you can see, if you're watching the texture, uh, the, the change is negligible. I mean, you really, it really doesn't do anything. What, the way to make this really work, the, way, the thing that really makes this thing pop is the levels effect. So you lay down your mat, you make it tent so it's only black and white, and then you drop the levels. So now it, when I drop the levels effect, you can, there's supposed to be a histogram here, and I can't see it. And sometimes you can, and sometimes you can't. All you got to do is sort of come over here to this triangle and move it a little bit, and then it pops on. So what this histogram is, is this is your black, and you can see there's basically no black over here. Here's your white. There's no white over here. And what I want to do is make sure there's some white and some black because if I come over here and solo this layer, you can see there's nothing that's really opaque because there's no white. And there's nothing that's really completely see-through because there's no complete black. And so I want that to happen. So I'm going to come over here and just you can watch the logo as I move the levels effect over. If I move the whites over, you can see it, you can see it getting brighter and brighter. And if I come over here and I grab the blacks and I move it over, then you can see it. And you can see if I push it really hard, you get this really deep, you know, kind of just burned out wood. Or I can move it over here. And this is where you really have the control. And if you have your blacks and whites exactly where you want them, you can grab this middle one and even sort of push it to have a little bit more specific effect over the way that you want your texture to look. So, you know, I want this to look a lot like wood. And, um, you know, to me that looks pretty good. So, you know, that's essentially it. I mean, that's the first part of it. You just, you put the mat on top, add the tent, add the levels, and affect it how you want to. Now, if I solo this layer now, you can see I can, there's a lot of white, I mean, there's a lot of white right now in it. And all those white spots, I'm going to turn this layer back on, all those white spots I can see, and the black I cannot see, but I'm seeing through to the layer, oops, I'm seeing through to the layer underneath. I'm seeing right through to the black. This might be what you want. In what, some cases, I could move this around, and you see that the background stays exactly where it is, and I'm moving this image around and leaving the background. That's something that I've seen on you know stuff, and it looks pretty cool. Or I could parent this, and then uh, you know now they're stuck together, and they move together. Now, if I didn't want to see through to the black background, if I didn't want this to be sort of burned into the background, then you know, maybe I want this to be a different color. In that case, all I got to do is duplicate the Congo logo, Command D, and you see that it went on top because it didn't want to interrupt what's happening with the Luma mat. And I'll just move it underneath the logo, and it's still looking a little bit funny. That's because I duplicated a layer with the Luma mat on it, so it also has a Luma mat. Just turn that off, and it looks like I'm right back where I started. But if I come over here and go to the fill effect, I'm gonna just drop it onto the layer underneath, now you see it's very, very red, and I can just change the color. So maybe I wanted the background to be, you know, sort of a wood-ish color. So I'm going to make it sort of just a dark brown, you know, something like this, I guess. Looks cool. And then uh, I'll parent that to the one in the middle, and that's the controller. And now they're all stuck together, and, you know, if I change this background to be, you know, blue or something, I'm not I'm not affecting, you know, if I turn this off, oops, you know, I can have the background stick. So, you know, the thing that can be, let's go back a few points, or back where we started, the thing that can be a little bit frustrating about this effect is that you have to use three layers to really make it work. But it's not really a big deal, you know, just come over here, make them all uh, orange, and then, uh, you know, then I just know wherever the orange layers are, that's what I'm working with. The one in the middle is the controller, and it can do all the, the effect. And that's essentially it. I mean, that's the long and short of it. 
Now you can go further with this if you want to. I'm just going to take this and I'm going to shift command C to pre-comp it. I'll call it logo with texture. And so now it's two layers and the top layer is the the textured logo and the bottom one is just the background. So what I'm going to do now is just command Y and I'll call this fractal. Now I'm going to come over here and add fractal noise double click on it to make it go on to the layer. Now right out of the box without doing any work all I'm going to do is come over here to the brightness and turn the brightness down. You see it goes black and I'll turn the brightness up and you see it goes completely white and if we're talking about luma mats and you can't see it when it's black and you can see it when it's white you might be able to guess what we're about to do. So I'm going to come over here to my texture. My fractal is my mat so I'm going to put the mat on top of it and I'll go to a uh, luma mat and already you can kind of see what's happening. I'm going to come over here and turn this down all the way and then I'm going to turn it up, turn up the brightness and you can see you just get this fade in effect or you know if I had it like sort of halfway I could have the evolution on a time and you can see it moving, you see it evolving, it looks like smoke or something like that. You can do a lot of really cool stuff using the fractal noise because it's black and white and make, you know, I could invert this. I can make this, you know, obviously a luma inverted. And uh, so that's a pretty cool effect. And that's how I did this this reveal. Again, very simply, I just had a texture and I just animated the fractal noise brightness coming on. And this is just a plaster background, same background I had before. Same thing with this one. All I did here is uh, I had the fractal noise and then added a linear wipe. And, the, you know, just sort of had the the linear wipe, wipe on and wipe off. You can imagine, you know, some fire or something like that coming up with this if you wanted to, you know, do that. Um, one other thing over here. So here's a circle. Now, when it, this is just the shape layer. And for me, whenever I use shape layers, I always have a lot of trouble doing a, uh, a gradient on the shape layer itself. So in this case, I'm going to turn this layer on. All this is is a, you know, a white with a little radial. And, uh, and there it is. Now, when I solo it, you can see I'm seeing through to the background. And maybe that's what I want, maybe not. And if I don't want that, then I can just duplicate the shape layer, move it to the bottom, and make it a different color, like, for example, uh, yellow. Make it a bright yellow or something. And now, you know, parent that, oops, I got to turn the luma mat off. There it is, bright yellow. Parent that to the middle layer. Make all of these the same color. Let's say fuchsia. And uh, so, and then I can move this around. And I can come up here and play with the, you know, this, this place where the, where this is specifically. I can move it out here and have it come in. So, you know, I can have them stay together. If I unparent this, and I can just move this and have that stay still. So you know you got a lot of a lot of control over the kinds of things you want to do. Um, this one is another example. You know, not awesome or anything. All it is, is I just put a picture and then uh, you know just did a couple of luma mats. In this case, there's only two layers. I didn't do the third, so you're seeing through to the background. If I move this picture, you can see through. Oh, in fact, here I'll make it easier. I'll just turn that one off. So. There's another picture. These are both just pictures of the city. You know, I just took a picture of New York. But you can see, uh, you know, you can see right through if you wanted to do that kind of thing. You know, and in this case, it just had like I just did that fractal noise, um, put a little glow effect on it on the. Uh, and the other thing is too, like on this one, I used a hard light. You can still add modes. So like uh, for <laughs> produced by Creative Congo, you know, if I wanted to. Besides having a luma mat on, I could also make it a, a stencil alpha. You know, you can do all the, the same kind of modes that you would normally do. And so it doesn't take away your, your ability to have, you know, an overlay mode on top of it. You just have a little bit more, you know, in this case it doesn't look so hot. But, you know, you just have a little bit more control and over the way your texture looks. And, you know, that's really it. Sort of been babbling for a while. Hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, find it useful, and uh, download the project file, man. Enjoy the textures. Talk to you later. Thanks for watching. Bye.